Okay, so let me continue from uh, this point. As I told you guys, so the, the first category of the skin factor is S sub D. And S sub D comes from the mechanical skin factor. And the skin factor uh, comes from the uh, injection process, if we have injection, and the production uh, process. The uh, mechanical skin factor could have the uh, uh, skin factor of the uh, drilling process, skin factor of uh, the completion process, skin factor of the uh, work over. All of them together, all of them uh, called mechanical skin factor. Now, uh, the second type of the first category of sub D is the skin factor comes from the production process. What are the skin factor caused by the uh, production process? The first one, we have the organic deposits. The organic deposits. We have two types of the organic uh, deposits. They are really very harmful, actually. The first one is the parabens, and the second one is the asphaltines. The parabens is uh, a high molecular weight alkans group with more than C20. So they, they are really heavy hydrocarbons. Typically, they are soluble in the crude oil. For some reason, the crude oil could lose the ability to keep the uh, parabens soluble. So they could what? They could precipitate and making some of the uh, deposits inside the porous media. And this could cause some damage to the porous media, to the permeability. See? So this is the uh, skin factor of the uh, parabens. The same impact could be observed by the asphaltine. As, as, as I told you, one of the uh, big challenges for the petroleum industry in the Middle East is the asphaltine uh, uh, production. What is the asphaltine? It is a heavy hydrocarbon with a uh, heavy hydrocarbon group with uh, nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen compound. They are very heavy hydrocarbons. Typically, they are soluble in the crude oil. Again, for some reasons, the crude oil could lose the ability for keeping them soluble. And they are going to be uh, precipitated in the porous media. What are the reasons for changing the solubility of the parabens and asphaltine? This could be the change in the uh, temperature, the change in the pressure, the change in the composition of the crude oil uh, itself. Okay? Because of uh, one of these uh, reasons, we may have this precipitation of the parabens or asphaltines. Now, the second type of the production the skin factor is the swelling of clay and the fine migration. I have talked about these two types of skin factor when I talked about the skin factor caused by the uh, drilling mud. I told you that the filtrate, what is the filtrate? Most of it water. The water could be obser ob observed by some of the minerals, especially spectrite and elite. And they do have the ability to increase the volume. This is the swelling process. Increase the volume more than 20% from the original volume. This is for the drilling mud. Now, for the production, when the when we will have water production with oil or with gas, when the water cut is going to increase, when we have water production, then we are expecting to have the swelling process. For some of the layer, if there is high percentage of a clay and the mineralogy of the layers, may have high percentage of spectite and elite, then we are expecting to have the uh, uh, swelling uh, phenomenon. The fine migration, especially for unconsolidated sand, 
the unconsolidated sand grains could move with the reservoir fluid when the velocity is really high. Okay? And the solid grains, the unconsolidated grains, could uh, precipitate somewhere in the porous media close to the whirlpool, and this could cause the uh, permeability change. Two-phase flow also, as you know, guys. If we have volumetric reservoirs and the pressure is greater than the bubble point of pressure, so the production will be a single phase of flow, that is oil. And there is no problem. But when the pressure is going to be less than the bubble point of pressure, then we're expecting to have what? Two phase of flow, oil and gas. And in this case, we are going to have more pressure growth. Now, these are the, the uh, formation damage caused by the, uh, let me say, uh, by the, uh, the mechanical skin factor and the production or the damage caused by the uh, production process. And of course, the damage caused by drilling, completion, work over. Now, for the horizontal, this is for vertical wells. For horizontal wells, we are expecting to have more damage. The reason for that because typically we have very long horizontal sections. The the horizontal section could extend could extend in the porous media for very long distance it is not similar to the to the part of the vertical well that could that could penetrate the pay zone this could be 10 feet no more than that but for the horizontal section we are talking about thousands long thousands of feet long and if we have open hole completion you can imagine the formation that damage that we could have. Now, if we if we if we have some of the techniques for removing the formation damage from the vertical well, like the acidizing, then absolutely we cannot do that for horizontal wells because we we need very big volume of the acid solution for removing the. Uh, formation damage from the area close to the well bore if we have uh, a long horizontal section. You know what I'm saying? However, we could accept that knowing that the production capacity of the horizontal well is much bigger than the production capacity of the vertical well. And this is true. Why? Because the contact area, the contact area between the well bore and the porous media given by the horizontal well bores, much bigger than the contact area of the vertical well bore with the porous media. Okay. Now, the vertical well bore could be better than the horizontal well bore in the, uh, uh, the point of the differential pressure. The differential pressure that could that we could need it for removing the damage at the starting of the, of the production for vertical well is bigger than the, the differential pressure that we could have it when we have a horizontal well bore. So we could remove the damage by the differential pressure from the vertical wells, but we may not be able to do it with uh, the horizontal uh, well bores. Now here is some of the uh, the. Uh, uh, let me see the completion types of the uh, horizontal well bores. So we could have uh, this type, dual opposite or stacked well bores, horizontal well bores, branched, branched. This is the branched horizontal well bores. Again, this is another type of stacked horizontal well bores, forked and supplate. Guys, I don't know. 
last year, if you remember, I uh, used to, uh, uh, I used to uh, uh, write, uh, actually, uh, it was uh, uh, published last year. Uh, the, uh, the paper was uh, uh, focused on uh, what's called fishbone type completion. Fishbone type uh, completion. It was published by the Journal of uh, Petroleum Science and uh, Engineering. And I do have another one for the spacing between uh, the uh, multi, uh, multilateral horizontal wells, the impact of the spacing on the performance of something like that. Highly recommend if you, uh, if you could uh, read them. Yes, they are not talking about skin factor, but you could have some idea about the, the performance of the fish uh, pawn type, uh, fish pawn type uh, completion and of course the multilateral uh, horizontal well completion. You can find them, one of them, as I said, Journal of Petroleum Science and Engineering, and the other one, as, as far as I know, Journal of Natural Gas Science and Engineering. Both of them were published uh, last year. If you need them, just let me know so I can uh, email, uh, email the soft copy to you. Okay, let, let me continue. Now, so we are done with the first category that is a sub D. Now it is time to talk about the second category that is a sub C plus theta. And as I said, a sub C, C goes to the completion. It means the skin factor caused by the partial completion. While a sub theta, theta goes to, to what? Goes to the slanted wells, slanted wells. Now, let us talk about a sub C, the skin factor caused by the uh, partial completion. Now, we have two, let me say, we have two uh, terms. We need, to, we need to understand them. The first one is called partial completion. The second one is called partial perforation. The partial completion is used for the case when we do not need to have fully penetration. I mean, the well bore does not need to fully penetrate the formation. The, forma the formation is partially penetrated by the well bore. This is called partially completed. Why? Why we may have something like that? For example, if we believe that we could have we, we could be close to the uh, uh, the water if we have high water table and we believe that the water could be produced with oil so we do not need to go all the way down uh, inside the uh, pay zone we need to stay away from the uh, uh, the uh, zones where the water is uh, uh, existed this is the first uh, thing so this type of completion is called partially, uh, partial completion, okay? So this could be, this could be described by skin factor because we do not use the whole formation thickness. We, we use part of the uh, formation thickness. This is why we could say, okay, this is, this could be described by skin factor. Okay. The second one, partial per perforation. Partial perforation, for example, for if we have water support and gas cup. Initially, we have water support and gas cup. Now, if we have the perforation for the whole formation thickness, then what we could have, we could have water production, we could have gas production, and we do not need both. So what we can do, we can, we can perforate 
the zone that is away from the water and the gas cup. So we could delay, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I am not saying prevent, we could delay the production of water, the production of gas for some time. This type is called partial perforation. So the perforation is going to be, see, this is partial completion, guys. Here is partial completion. We do not drop the production casing all the way down to the bottom layer of the formation. Okay? While this one is the partial perforation. See, this is gas cup, and here is water support. And we do not need, we do not need neither water production nor uh, gas production. So what can we do? Partial perforation. Again, partial completion, as I said, partial perforation. We use part of the reservoir potential represented by the reservoir thickness. This is described by skin factor also. For both partial completion, partial perforation, we have what is called the convergence of the uh, flow lines. So if you look carefully here, you're going to find that the streamlines of reservoir fluid for this area, it, it is totally horizontal. So there is no problem here. But for the streamlines comes from the upper and lower part, they have to change the direction toward the area where the pressure is small. And this change in the direction requires more pressure drop. And again, the skin factor is, is what? Is the additional pressure drop, no more than that. So when we have extra pressure drop because of something, this could be part of the skin factor. Now, so we know what does it mean, a sub C. A sub C, the skin factor caused by either partial completion or partial penetration. Well, the second type, a sub theta, that is the skin factor caused by slanted wells. Now, which one, which one, which case gives more contact area with reservoir fluid. The vertical well bore or the slanted well bore for the same based on thickness. Which one gonna give more contact area between the well bore and the, uh, uh, and the reservoir fluid? The first one is the vertical well bore. This is the vertical well bore, see? Here's the vertical well bore, see, guys? And the second one is the slanted well bore, like this. Which one gives more contact area, guys? Would you please give me some feedback? What do you think? Which one gives more? Slanted, to John, I think. Slanted well. Slanted well. Yeah. Who could confirm that, guys? Who could confirm that? Who would agree? Who would agree with? With what? With who? Neslihan Hoca. Neslihan? Yes, Hoca. Okay, who could agree with Neslihan? Asmet, what do you think? Asmet? Hocam, can you please repeat the question again, one more time? We have vertical well bore here, and we have a slanted well bore. For the same formation thickness, which one gives more contact area between the well bore and the reservoir fluid? More contact area. 
Um, slanted, I guess. Yes, I agree. Nestle Hand. Nestle Hand said slanted. Who else? Who else? Who's there? What do you think? Who's there? Are you there? Who's there? Slanted? Yeah, of course. Uh huh. Okay. Who else? Let me see. Please give me your feedback. Fatih, what do you think? Fatih? Slanted. Slanted. Good. I think. Denise, what do you think? Slanted, Ojam. Good, good, good. Ebro. Ebro, Ojam, because of deviation, I guess. Uh huh. Slanted. Olash, are you there? Olash? Olash, are you there? John, what do you think? Yes, I agree. I uh, agree. Burak? Burak, what do you think? Burak? Hojam, he wrote slanted. Slanted, okay, I got, I got him, I got him. Aisha, Aisha, what do you think, Aisha? Slanted, Hojam. Slanted, uh, okay, Osgur? Osgur, what do you think? Osgur? Let's go. Give me some feedback, please. Okay, good. So it is slanted, but do you know why? Oh, of course, we we know that. Uh, okay, the 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 actual length, the actual length of the whale bore. If you have slanted, the actual length. I'm not talking about the true vertical length. I'm talking about the actual length. The actual length of slanted whale is more than the actual length of vertical whale. So basically, what we have. We have more contact area given by the slanted well than the uh, vertical well. It means that the pressure drop caused by the slanted well in this case could be less than the pressure drop caused by vertical well bore. Therefore, the skin factor of a slanted well is less than this. Oh, okay, let me see. The skin factor of the slanted well could be negative, less than zero. I'm talking about a sub theta, but only a sub theta. I'm not talking about total skin factor. A sub theta only is negative. It can't be positive. See what I'm saying? Please give me your attention for this point. The skin factor of the skin factor caused by the uh, uh, slanted well. It is always. It is always negative. It can't be positive. But it does not mean that the total skin factor negative. No, total skin factor could be negative. I am talking about the part of the skin factor given by a sub theta. It is always negative. Is that a clear so far, guys? Is that a clear so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Good. Okay. Now, Sincoli 1975, Sincoli et al. actually. The most, the most one worked on the uh, skin factor of a slanted well. In 1975, he proposed a table for calculating the value of S sub C and the value of S sub theta based on what? Based on what is called H sub D. What is H sub D? H sub D is dimensionless thickness. Dimensionless thickness. What is that? Deformation thickness divided by wellbore radius. This is the first one. And Elevation ratio. What is that? ZW divided by H. What is ZW? It is the location. It is the location of the midpoint of the perforation zone measured from what? From the bottom layer. It is the location in the vertical direction of the midpoint of the perforation section measured from the bottom of the uh, bottom layer of the reservoir. This is ZW divided by H, the total formation thickness. And completion ratio. 
HW divided by H. HW is the uh, the vertical vertical length of the perforated section. It is not the actual length. It is the vertical length of the perforated zone. Here, look, this is the vertical length. See. RW. While here it is slanted, but we are looking for what? We are looking for vertical length of the perforated section. So please be careful. Divided by what? The total formation thickness, that is H. So these are the three parameters. Then you can go to the tables. You can get the value of S sub C and S sub theta. What you need to know, actually, again, you need to know how much is the inclination angle. How much your, how much the uh, angle, the deviation angle from the vertical direction also, you have to know that. So, the tables given by Sincoli et al are shown here. Okay. Actually, when you go to the textbook written by uh, Michael Economides, Idal and Daniel Hales and uh, uh, the lady uh, Christine uh, Economides, uh, the textbook, you're going to find the tables, these tables also there. But basically, uh, we have to talk about the first uh, group who introduced the tables to the uh, literature. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about Sincoli, Idal, 1975. So, let me make it bigger so we could work on it together. See, see, guys. Now, for example, what we have here. Let me see insert shape. So this one. So this is for see. Here is the inclination angle. See, this is the inclination angle. See, this is the inclination angle here. Let me use my my markers up better. Okay. So this is the inclination angle. H sub D. What is H sub, sub D? H divided by RW. Okay. And this is ZW divided by H. And this is HW divided by H. Here is S C plus theta, the total. Well, this is S sub C only. And this is S sub theta only. See? So let us say that we have 100. S sub D 100. This is S sub C 100. This is all 100, see? All 100, H sub D. Okay. Theta is 45. This is theta 45 here. 45, 45, 45, and so on. And H sub D is 100. We need more. We, we need more parameters. Let us say that ZW divided by H is 0. 0.5. So where is 0. 0.5? This is 0. 0.5, see? More, here is 0. 0.5. This is 45. See, this is 45. We need more. What? So, what we need more? We need HW divided by H. Let me say that is 0.25. So, 100, 100, 100. See, this is 100. Let me move a little bit down. Aha, uh -huh. see, 100, see, guys, 100, this is 100, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, but we need the 45, so this is 45, see, guys, so 100, this is 100, see, guys, 100, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and this is theta 45, so move in this direction, this is the total as C plus theta, this is a C only, 6.61. And this is theta. See, it is negative. It is negative. That's what I say. S sub theta always negative. Always negative. Except when theta is zero, it is zero. See what I'm saying, guys? Is that clear so far, guys? Good. So here is the way how to how to use the tables given by Sun uh, Kohli 1975. So these are these are both for. Uh, HD 100, and we have another one for HD 1000. HD 1000. 
this is HD 1000. See, this is for HD 1000. If you have between them 100 and 1000, you can make your interpolation between 100 and 1000. Uh, if you need more information, guys, you can go back to the to the uh, to the published articles by Sinkoli Idal, 1975. If you need it, I can. If you need, I can help you on this point. Okay. If you need more information, so here is the way how to calculate s sub c, s sub theta, and of course s sub c plus uh, uh, theta. Good. Now we are done with s sub d. We are done with a sub C plus theta. We are going to go to the third category. That is a sub P. A sub P, the one for the perforation. The one for the perforation. Okay. So a sub P is the skin factor. The skin factor comes from the case hole completion. Or comes from the uh, uh, perforation, perforation process. Now, when we have case hole completion, when we have case hole completion, the perforations will be the the uh, open holes for the fluid to flow from the porous media to the well port. So basically, when we need to talk about the the cross-section area of a flow, definitely cross-section area of a flow given by the case hole completion is much less than the cross-section area of a flow given by open hole completion. But uh, sometimes it, it, it is not in your hand. It's out of control. You cannot use open hole completion always. Yes, it is very cheap. I know. But sometimes you, you, you cannot use it. The conditions downhole could not help you using the open hole completion. So what, what you have to do, you, you, you can go with case hole completion. And then what you need, you need for the perforation process. The tunnel, the perforation tunnels could pass the area where the damage, yes, of course. But there will be another damage caused by the perforations. OK. There will be close to the perforation tunnel. There will be totally crushed area. So the permeability of the crushed zone is nothing, actually. If you remember, guys, the first or the second week, when we have been talking about the pressure drop caused by oven hole completion, pressure drop caused by the perforations, and pressure drop caused by what? The gravel pact for Darcy flow and non-Darcy flow. Guys, do you remember that? And you have an assignment for uh, something like that. And in the midterm exam, question one, I think. Do you remember that or not? Hello? Guys? I'm talking about the pressure drop caused by the completion technology. The, the, yes. I think the second week, we have yes, we have covered, yes, we have talked about the pressure drop caused by open hole completion, cased hole completion, gravel packed completion for both Darcy and non Darcy. Yes, sir. Okay. So we know how to calculate the pressure drop. And at that time, I told you that there's, there, there is a, uh, there is a small, actually small area close to the perforation tunnel. This area should be crushed totally by the perforations when, when we need to create the perforations and the permeability of this area could be almost zero and there will be no flow at all. Okay, so this could be part of the damage caused by the perforation. So the damage caused by the perforation or the skin factor resulted from the damage caused by the perforation depends on your design for the perforation system. And this could, this could depend on what? A lot of parameters. What are they? What will be your well bore radius, one of them? What will be the radius of the perforation? What will be the length of the perforation? 
what will be the distance? I'm talking about the vertical distance between the perforations. Okay, what will be the phase and angle, the perforation density? See what I'm saying? All of the uh, these parameters should be considered when we design our perforation system because re they really have some impact on the pressure drop. They really have some impact on the damage caused to the porous media outside the tunnels. Okay. Now, it has been found that the skin factor caused by the perforations comes from three types of the damage. The first one, this is called the plan flow effect. A sub edge plan flow effect. The second one is called vertical convergence effect. Vertical convergence effect. The third one is the well bore effect. Well bore effect. A sub WP. See what I'm saying? Now, for the plan flow effect, we are talking about the horizontal flow from the porous media to the perforation, the, the horizontal flow from the uh, porous media, moving from the porous media to the perforations. This is the first one. Okay. While the second one is the vertical convergence. Okay. So we, we have the perforations here. So the fluid is going to move like this. It is not going to move totally horizontal. It's going to move with the, with the change in the direction, with the change in the direction. So it could move inside the perforations. So it's kind of changing the streamlines, the flow of, of the flow lines. And this could cause more pressure to drop. Okay. Now we will know how to calculate the three terms of the uh, perforation skin factor. The first one, as I said, the plan flow effect, a sub edge. This one is calculated by a mathematical model that says that a sub edge is the uh, uh, natural logarithm of RW divided by RW dash. What is RW dash? This is the effect of well bore radius. So it says that we could have a virtual well bore that is not similar to the actual well bore. So what does it mean that we could have a virtual well bore that, that is not similar? It means that, okay, when you have actual, when, when, you, when your actual well bore is uh, with, a, with a well bore 